Todd Robbins once said, half of what you see at the sideshow is real, half is fake. Of course, they're not going to tell you which is which. The irony is, what you think is the truth is probably false, and what you think is false is probably true. It's all created to make you think what you thought you were thinking is not what you think you thought. Or something along those lines. Anyway, in today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're talking about the uncovered truth of the half man, half lady, aka Josephine Joseph. Josephine Antonina Samba is thought to have been born on the 4th of July 1891 in Pudjocina, Austria, in what was then known as the Galicia area of Austria. Much of her personal life, as well as her career timeline, has never been clearly established, but hopefully we plan to uncover as much of it as we can today. When she turned 18, she and her older brother travelled to Ellis Island, New York, arriving on the 17th of April 1909. Between them, they only had $17 to their net. They moved in with their uncle, and she soon found herself a job working in a local embroidery shop. When she was 26, she met a man called George Wass. The two were eventually married in Manhattan on the 20th of August, 1917. But it wasn't until the 1920s that Josephine took to the stage and began performing with George acting as her manager. She began performing in local sideshows as a human oddity under the stage name Josephine Joseph. Supposedly, her body was split exactly down the middle, one side female, the other side male. She claimed to be a hermaphrodite, but there's no concrete evidence to confirm whether this is true or not. If she really was intersex, then she would have been born with both male and female reproductive organs. It's more than likely she was just a very skilled impersonator, and this was her gimmick to getting a well-paid job working in the sideshow. Working this way was not unheard of, and over the years, several other half and half acts, as they were known at the time, were performing using this same gimmick, such as Albert Alberta, La La Kula, and Thelma Elmer, who were all billed as sexual enigmas and morphodites. That's not to say that there were no real intersex performers working on the sideshow circuit, however, with this genetic condition, the body wouldn't simply split into two halves a male half and a female half. That was all for show and just added to the illusion. The illusion itself was reminiscent of the Hindu deity Ardhanari Shavara, an androgynous form depicted as half male and half female, equally split down the middle. The right half usually being the male, Shiva, and the left being the female, Parvati. In the sideshow, the overwhelming majority of half-man, half-woman acts were actually males who dressed half of their body to look like females, which has led some people to wrongly assume that Josephine Joseph was actually born male. But this just isn't true. Like many so-called sideshow hermaphrodites of the early 20th century, she did this by modifying her body, presenting herself as strong and masculine on the right and delicate and feminine on the left. This was achieved by exercising one side of the body to define muscle tone. She was well tanned and she had her hair on just that side undercut. The feminine side would be covered while not performing and remained unexercised, making it pale and flabby, accentuating her breast. Her hair on this side was grown long and she brushed it from the right to the left, giving the impression of short hair on the right hand side. Her eyebrows were even shaped differently on each side too. She further accentuated the illusion by wearing a custom made half and half costume. She likely made this costume herself using the skills she learned while working in the embroidery shop in previous years. Her most famous costume consisted of a bare right leg with a sandal and a black stocking left leg with a woman's shoe. She wore a Tarzan style loincloth on the male side and a low cut, tight fitting top and hot pants on the female side. A look that has been parodied countless times all over the world and in many different styles. The 1925 New York State Census records George and Josephine living together at 310 West 43rd Street, New York City, 
and promotional posters around the same time printed in the magazine's spotlight and screen by promoting a show called Josephine Joseph's Sideshow, a congress of wonderful human freaks featuring Josephine Joseph, half man, half woman. A few years later, in January 1928, a Pennsylvania article calls her all-female show the Josephine Joseph Big Circus Sideshow. Not only is she the headline act, but the show's size seems to have grown dramatically too, now consisting of at least eight performers. The show stayed at the Raja Theatre for a three-day engagement and it's reported that large audiences were in attendance. The lineup consisted of Lionette, the Lion Face Lady, Meal Victoria, the Tattooed Lady, Knife Thrower's Assistant, Marie Howard, Martha Morris, the Armless Wonder, Sword Swallower, Marie Devere, and Jolly Irene, billed as the fattest lady in the world. At some point, George and Josephine travelled from America to England, where we assume they stayed for a number of years. On the 1st of February 1930, they departed Liverpool on the White Star Line ship Cedric, which took them to New York, a journey which took 10 days. They stayed for only one month before returning back to the UK on the 14th of March, arriving in Liverpool on the 24th of March. They travelled up to Blackpool where George and Josephine opened a small sideshow attraction on the seafront, a very popular tourist attraction at the time. Their promotional poster read, Josephine Joseph, half woman, half man, the most sensational freak of nature, brother and sister in one body. The two were arrested just five months later and appeared before Blackpool magistrates on the 22nd of August 1930, charged with false pretenses and conspiracy. The best thing about newspaper articles reporting the case though is the headline, another half man, half woman case, like there was so many of them at the time. It wasn't a big trial though because it didn't attract national interest and it was only reported by a few local papers the Lancashire Daily Post and the Yorkshire Post. And from the sounds of it, the case was a shambles from start to finish, with George and Josephine having to appear in court the very day after being served with the summons, giving them virtually no time to prepare a defence. The pair refused to submit Josephine to a court doctor's physical examination, however, they did offer to provide x-rays to the court instead, provided they were given an adjournment. The adjournment was refused and the x-rays rejected as evidence without even being seen. In court, Superintendent Hanan, who was in charge of the case, said, I have no idea what the medical testimony may be, but I do say this, that the woman, so far as I know, does show to the public certain muscles on one side of her body which are more developed than those on the other side. She also has a male voice and a female voice, she may be without breast on one side, but this does not make her half man, half woman, as it can be brought about by operation or by physical exercises. Muscles can be developed on one side of the body and not on the other. In order to avoid a jury trial, George replied, I want to plead guilty and I want to get it over with. You are not going to crucify me entirely, are you? We both plead guilty. In the end, they did both plead guilty, the conspiracy charge was dropped and the show was ordered to be stopped immediately. Interestingly, only George was fined. He was fined £25 while Josephine was discharged despite also pleading guilty. They then left the country immediately after the trial and headed back to New York. At some point during early 1931, she travelled from Manhattan, New York to Culver City, California. It was here that Josephine Joseph performed her most memorable role in the cult classic 1932 film Freaks by Todd Browning. Although she only had two lines in the film, she did appear in a number of scenes, most notably the wedding reception scene where she's the one who begins the chant. In another notable scene early on in the film, Josephine gives an alluring look towards the strongman Hercules, to which Roscoe, the stuttering circus clown, responds comically, I think she, 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 she likes you, 
but he did it down. <laughs> it's believed Josephine and George got divorced in the mid 1930s as the 1940 census listed George as single, not widowed. George stayed in Manhattan and Josephine moved to Chester, Pennsylvania and began working as a housemaid for a Polish family before passing away on the 11th of July 1966, one week after her 75th birthday. It's not clear why she stopped performing, especially after all the publicity freaks would have generated at the beginning of the 1930s. Maybe being her manager, George was the driving factor behind her act. And after their divorce, she just didn't know how to continue running a show. Maybe she worried about being exposed as a charlatan again, similar to what had happened in Blackpool, and thought continuing to perform after the release of Freaks was too risky. Or maybe the popularity in which the act was depicted began to die out due to the rise in drag artists becoming more accepted in mainstream entertainment. Either way, before Freaks was released, she seemed to disappear and fade away into obscurity, being buried under the name of Josephine S. Wass. And there we have it, the uncovered truth of the half man, half lady, Josephine Josie. Hopefully we've managed to lift the veil on her largely uncovered life. It's worth mentioning that most of the information about Josephine Joseph was compiled by avid researchers Ray M of Lost History Blogs and by Estelle Hargreaves of skittishlibrary.co.uk. Big props to them and if you're interested in finding out more about their individual research process, check out their websites. Links will be in the description box below. But how about you? Do you have any more information about her? Do you have any references to her in pop culture that I've missed? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for this week, but remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more modified marbles, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video and if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.